morning, everyone. Welcome to Prayers with Vivian. I'd like to start this morning by some things the Lord was saying to me before the meeting. He began talking to me early this morning when I was sitting, doing one of my favorite things, having a cup of coffee and some breakfast. He started talking to me about the heart and the heart issues. Many of us are going through financial difficulties, physical difficulties, maybe a loss of a job or a loved one that's going through some difficulties. And it's all a heart issue. That's the place where it starts. He first gave me Proverbs 4, 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Everything in life, the issues that we face, whether it's a job or stressful situation with a coworker, stressful situation with a husband or our children, everything about that is because we have a heart problem. And God wants to get to the heart problem. And he sometimes has to allow those external things to get to the internal thing. And then he led me to Exodus chapter 4. And I wondered, what in the world does Exodus chapter 4 have to do with it? And it became clear when he talked about Moses putting his hand inside his bosom. He was telling me how Pharaoh wasn't like a king. A king is someone who is a ruler over others. A Pharaoh is someone who is a god themselves. And it reminded me of Satan, how he wanted to be like the most high god. I had to relate that to myself. How many times have I wanted to be God of my own life? How many times have I wanted control over situations, no matter what they were, and tried to get my hand in there and fix it, or make it better, pray to let go of that hand? Pharaoh was doing the same thing. He didn't want to let God's people go. He wanted the hand. He wanted the right hand of God. And we can't want our own hand to be the right hand of God. What uh, Exodus 4 says, verse 4, And the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. He's talking about the rod here. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. They may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, God of Jacob, Abraham, and Isaac, has appeared to you. Sometimes the Pharaoh in us wants to say, oh, God doesn't speak today. Oh, he doesn't appear today. He does appear. So then he said to Moses, Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. He put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, he held his hand was leprous like snow. The Lord said to me that we all have a leprous heart. If we were to stick our hand in our bosom, it would come out leprous. It would be covered with sores because there's wounds, wounds from things that have happened. Wounds from words people have said to us, wounds, they're sores that are open and infected. And leprosy also looks white, like a almost like a snow. It's a covering over the it, in the skin. And the other thing he said to me. It's a bacterial infection. And it has to do with the things that have infected our heart. Whether it's hatred, anger, um, unforgiveness, bitterness, uh, lying, whatever those things are that have infected us, that's what's making our heart leprous. That's what's creating lesions on our heart, on our skin, the issues of life. And he wants to deal with that wants to get to that heart issue, so he's allowing the external situations that we're going through to tell us, hey, wake up, you've got a heart issue. Let me come in. Let me deal with it. Let me cleanse it. How can we know that he'll cleanse it? Well, he says in Isaiah 118, come, 
and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I thought that was so interesting how he drew the comparison between the white of the leprosy and the cleansing of our heart, making it white as snow. That what was once a diseased white to be a cleansed white, a purification process of how he helps us. The other thing that leprosy does to us is if it's not treated, it causes nerve damage, severe disfigurement, and eventually disability. It can cause difficulty. So it can cause crookedness, crookedness in the body. And don't we see that and hear that related in scripture, how we are crooked in all of our ways. And he says to make straight paths for our feet so that what is lame can be healed. It's about making our way straight before the Lord as we come to him and letting him heal those crooked things so that what is lame can be healed. The dead parts, the, the skin, the putrefied sores, all of those issues be dealt with. He doesn't want us to be cast away from his presence just as the lepers in Jesus' day were cast out and they walked among the tombs because they had no place of residence. They couldn't be among other people. God wants us to be with him, to dwell with him, to abide with him. He wants that close fellowship and he showed that in the New Testament, by going to the place where the lepers were directly. He brought healing to them. He spoke healing to them. He touched them. Sometimes we don't want to be touched. We're like, oh, I'm so gross, God. I did this. I had anger. I spoke out of this. I did that. I've been in that situation where I don't want God to come around me or touch me because I feel so gross and ugly. He says, I love you and let me cleanse you. Come and let me heal you. Come and let me help you deal with these issues of life and restore you to who I created you to be. We were created for a purpose. We were created to be who he's created us to be. And he knows what that image looks like. And these other things that have happened to us can make us take on a different image. Just like my arthritis takes on a different image, a different appearance. That's not who I am in my spirit. And when my spirit, and my soul are correctly connected with God, I'm not going to look like this anymore. There is a healing. There is a restoration. There is a restoring of all the years and all the things the locusts in your life have eaten. If you'll just turn to him today. I pray that you will. I do have quite a few requests today. When I saw any of the requests coming in, I saw the depth of those issues, the ways that they're weighing on people's hearts and minds. And they weighed on mine throughout the week as I prayed. And I know that more than just Addressing the need that you've come to the Lord and to our ministry team with. He wants to deal with the issue of your heart in relationship to that need. So that there can be complete healing and complete restoration. So let's get to prayer. Jesus, I thank you so much. You do care about every area of our life. You look down upon our soul and you see our brokenness. You see the ways that uh, we're fractured, we're separated and apart from you. There are areas of us that are connected and area of us, areas of us that are not connected. You long for that connection. You long for that fellowship. You long to have us come extend out our hand to seek your face, receive the healing that you so freely gave to us. You suffered much that by your stripes we might be healed, might be healed. 
can't be healed if we don't come to your cross, Lord. If we don't bend the knee, if we don't bend our own strength and stop relying on our own understanding, if we hold on to stubbornness, obstinance, bitterness, and we hold on to all of these things, Lord, there can be no healing. It's bondage. Lord, you came to set the captive free. So we come today, Lord, on behalf of those that are in captivity, in their hearts, in their minds, situations in their life that make them feel like they're bound and they don't know what to do, have the answer for all of it, Lord. Maybe it's a prayer request for a loved one, a prayer request for themselves, Lord. Each and every one matters to you. Their hearts matter to you. Condition of their heart matters to you. And you want to meet the need and the need of the heart. I thank you so much for that. Your tenderness, for your mercy, for your compassion. You fail not. You are new every single morning. Faithfulness endures forever. From generation to generation to generation. You are the ancient of days. You are the one who is and was and is to come. Praise you for that, Lord. And I pray that come you would into each and every heart, into each and every person's life, Lord, that needs a touch from you. Some are needing a touch mentally. They've got a troubled mind, They're depressed. Maybe they've been told they're bipolar. They're depressed. Lord, your word says that you reached down from on high. You took, you drew us out of many waters. Draw them out of these waters in their mind, Lord. Bring healing for their mind. Bring healing for their soul, Lord. Pray for Yahushua, her finances, many issues she's dealing with, her car, that increase. Thank you for the ways that you have provided in the past. And I think of the song, Oh God, our help in ages past, our help in times to come. You are the rock, the eternal rock that can be depended upon to be our help. You are a strong tower. Your very name is a strong tower. You are the anchor to our soul. And Lord, I pray that you would anchor her soul in you that no matter what torrents may come her way, her finances, car, all the situations that she's having to deal with, Lord, you would be that anchor for her soul to which she continually cling to. Be weighed, weighed in you. Not tossed about. And from Maryland, sometimes when people have cancer and it gets to a certain stage, Lord, doctors say, mm, it's not much we can do. They give so many different medications that strip our bodies, open it up to other things. Lord, the way that you work, you do not do that. You do not strip us of the necessary things in order to bring the healing things. You just bring fullness. I ask for wholeness for Marilyn, Lord. You know how you want to accomplish that wholeness, whether it's in this life, or whether it's in the next. I pray that you would reconcile all things unto yourself. I pray that you would give her peace. I pray for her family members, Lord, that are concerned for her. Minister to them, Lord. Help them not to be uh, fearful with sudden terror, to trust in you, Lord. That you know what is best. Lift up Jordan today. He really needs to find a job, Lord. Sometimes we can seek, we can go, we can knock on doors and nothing opens. You are the one who opens the door that no man can shut. You shut the door that no man can open. And you know the door that you have prepared for Jordan. You want um, them to walk through, Lord. 
know the financial situation of not having a job and bills that come due, food that needs to be bought, in a way that can weigh on the heart and the mind. And I pray that they would surrender their mindset to you, their heart to you, and just trust in you with their whole heart and not lean into their own understanding. They would see all the ways that you're going to provide, the pathway that you're going to light before them. Thank you, Lord, that you don't forsake us, that you do turn the darkness to light before us. Pray for Mary Helen, Lord. She's been waiting anxiously for a new apartment and has filled out paperwork. And sometimes that can be the hardest part of a situation when you've done all that you can do and we're called upon to stand. I pray that you would help her to stand, to not be anxious about when it's going to come, how it's going to come, but to trust in you, Lord. It's going to come at the time ordained when all things are fulfilled and I think of uh, what your word said with regard to Mary when she was uh, expecting you and the fullness of the time had come she brought forth her firstborn son when the fullness of the time comes Lord you bring all things together and I pray that you would do that for Mary, Mary Helen I pray for her uncle going through health issues Lord catheter that he's had to have place lord i pray that it would not um, clog that there wouldn't be difficulties with it and that you would speak to him about the direction you would have him to take and he would be amenable to it he would be agreeable he would come into agreement with your spirit lord and not resist the hand that you want to give him lift up Patty to you, Lord, and I pray that you would bring recovery to her from this stroke. You know the severity of it, Lord. You know the areas of her body that have been affected. We're asking for restoration. Pray that she would not become disheartened or that she would lose hope, Lord, because you're a living hope. It's not a hope that appears and then disappears, but it's an ongoing hope because you're the living God that endures forever. And I pray that you would fill her heart with that living hope. That she would cling to you, that you would help her as she possibly has to learn how to do things all over again. You would give her courage and strength during these difficult days and weeks ahead, Lord. Help her to lift up her head and see that her redemption is right near her. She can look to you and her face can be radiant, Lord. Pray for Christine in need of more work. Thank you, Lord, that she has dedicated herself to the field of nursing, serving others, caring for them and their needs. But you know the situation that she is facing, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would uh, please minister to her and provide work that she may or may not need, Lord. You know exactly what you're doing and the situation and why she's in the situation she's in, the heart issues you may want her to look at that sometimes we miss. Pray that you would bring comfort to her and peace to her heart, that you have all things in hand and you do all things well. I know that her and her husband are also going through a house buying process, Lord. That can be very stressful a lot of paperwork and inspections and things that need to be done and I pray that they wouldn't get so caught up in all the details of that Lord that they would miss the ways that you're working in the situation but that you would help them to surrender all the details to you and then watch and see all the ways that you will bring all things into order you are, are a God of order and you are the one who brings all things into place who works all things together for our good. Pray for Sherry, Lord. Thank you so much for her heart. She's caring for her mom. Difficulty of caring for a parent who's aged, dealing with dementia, Lord. Please give her wisdom, the grace that she needs. Be her mother's covering at this time. 
Give her the strength that she needs mentally and physically, Lord. And I know that her mom's going to be moving into assisted care and what all that means. Pray that you would show her which a facility that she should be in. I pray that the people that will care for her mom will do so diligently, Lord, and righteously so that um, she would be well taken care of, that her, her needs would be addressed, Lord, and that they just wouldn't fall by the wayside, that everything that she has need of physically, Lord, would be provided. For Sherry, Lord, a move like that would mean a move her too as well. I pray that you would open up what you have for her, Lord, that she wouldn't be concerned or worried, but that she would cast it upon you and allow you to work in this situation in whatever way you see fit. Pray for Ellen, Lord. Multiple health issues that she's facing. Now two new diagnoses bring about great difficulty of mobility and pain, Lord. In the midst of the pain, in the midst of the waves and the storm, Lord, pray that you would help her to walk. I see you in the midst of her storm, in the midst of the trial and the difficulty. You stand above those things. You stand on those things. Those things are placed underneath your feet. I pray that you would place them underneath her feet as well, that she would worship you on the water. She would adorn you with her eyes, paying attention to you, looking deeply into your eyes, Lord, seeing that you're not affected by the things she's affected by, Lord. It would unite her heart to fear your name. Bring her into unity with you and your spirit, Lord. Pray for a kin, Lord. Just ask for prayer for her mother, situations that her mother are in that is creating a lot of stress and anxiety, Lord. Pray that you would bind that spirit of stress and anxiety. I pray that you would show her mother how to refuse to yield to that pressure, to that stress, but to look at you, Lord. You are the Prince of Peace. I ask that you would comfort her heart, Lord that you would crown her with your peace, that she would not let her heart be troubled, she would not let her be, heart be afraid, that she would know that you are with her. Lift up Berenice to you, Lord. Been through this surgical procedure and now has resulting neuropathy. I know how painful that can be, Lord. The mobility issues it creates, the stinging, the burning, that it feels like you're on fire, Lord. Pray that you would reconnect the nerves. You would calm those nerves down and the electrical signals, Lord. There is nothing that is too hard for you, nothing that is beyond you, Lord. Pray that you would direct the pathway of those very nerves, Lord. They would work in sync the way you have designed them to work. Not the way that they've been rerouted by man because of this surgery, that they would work the way that you designed them to work, Lord. Lift up Julie and her sister before you, Lord. This new issue with her heart that's been discovered. I pray that through it, they would not be disheartened, troubled, fearful, Lord, knowing that you are God. You are in the boat with them. Sometimes we do think we're asleep, and like David, we cry out, Oh God, where are you? The disciples in the boat, Lord, wake up. You had all things at hand. With one few words, Lord, you said, Peace be still. I pray that you would speak, Peace be still, into Julie and her sister's heart, Lord them know that you have this situation in hand, that you are in control, that you are sovereign over the situation. I know there are many others in the body of Christ that are going through great afflictions right now. Pray that you would encourage their heart, Lord, 
it's through the, the tribulation, through the affliction, that we enter into the kingdom of heaven. We all need to learn how to bow the knee, how to surrender ourselves to you instead of trying to handle it in our own selves or be self-sufficient, independent, We're brought up to be independent, to need no one, to rely upon ourselves, trust no one. And you're coming to us saying, trust in me with all of your heart. Give to me these situations. And I will not only handle the situation, but I'll bring healing to your heart. Pray for those that are in a position of leadership in this ministry, in your tabernacles, Lord. We ask for your wisdom and the guidance of your Holy Spirit, your counsel, Lord, that all that we do and say we bring honor and glory to you, that it wouldn't be our acts, your acts through us, Lord. We would exemplify and glorify you, that what would be seen would be you and not us that you would minister each one of us as leaders in the positions that you have ordained us and called us into, that we would walk worthy of that calling, Lord. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve you, Lord. Enter into your throne room. The beautiful throne you have, Lord. It's a throne of mercy and a throne of grace. Think of the verse in Psalms that says that a bird that has found a nest, a place beneath your altar. It's a place of rest, Lord. It can rest beneath your throne of grace and mercy. Thank you for that. Pray that you would bring each and every person listening to this broadcast into that place of rest, into that place of peace, Lord fellowship with you. Ask them to hear your voice in the morning, Lord. Ask them to hear a voice behind them saying, this is the way, walk in it. They could rejoice in you. Thank you for this day. Not just for all that you do for us, not just for these prayer requests that you have heard, Lord, and we have assurance that you will answer because of your character, your righteousness, your holiness, Lord. That way of yours that is so high, so just, and we need that way, Lord. We need to be lifted up onto that high way of holiness, Lord. Without it, we will not see you. Without holiness, we cannot see you. Without purity, we cannot see you. So we thank you for using these things to purify us because we do want to see your face. Bless your name. And I bless all of your children in your name. In Jesus' name, amen.